One of the easiest vulnerabilities to exploit is out of date software or unpatched software. So it's always a good idea to get rid of software that you're not using to reduce the risk of that happening. Today we're going to look at a typical scenario where we have a piece of software that's out of date that could theoretically be exploited, but currently isn't. But to prevent that from being a possibility in future, we are going to happily remove it. So we're going to focus on Visual Studio today and the Visual Studio runtimes that most of you probably have. Now the 2010 version went out of support in 2022, so this is no longer realistically a version you want to have on your machine. There's already 20. 15 and I think even 2016 versions available. So what we're going to do is use the get WMI object class uh, win32 underscore product to give us a list of all the software that's installed on this PC. Now we're not interested in all of the properties so we're going to use this select object property name. So we just get the name of all the software that's installed which will allow us to quickly see what it is that's there. Now Seeing what's installed is not the same as dealing with it, right? So the first thing we want to do is check A, is the software package we want to remove there? And yes, it is, or at least one. And next, we want to deal or handle that object. So in this case, we're going to pipe this into a list, and list will become an array because we've got multiple outputs, as you can see. So now we've got a list object, which is our array. We can start filtering on it. And I want to show you what happens with that because you this is actually a very good package for this as an example because of the naming convention right you have a C++ and C++ is a terrible thing in PowerShell and frankly a lot of other languages too because plus plus is a command under normal circumstances it's like multiplication so having it in a string always upsets and consequently I'm going to show you what happens when we just put that in, which is we get a nested quantifier. Now, there's a really easy way to fix this. Uh, we just need to put a break character in. So if we go back to where the C is and put a slash so that we have the break before the plus plus, you see it formats perfectly. So now we've got our filter. Let's go ahead and do something with that filter. So let's use a for each object loop so that we can go through our 64 and our x86 versions and uninstall them. So first let's test how that will work. So we create a typical for object loop, which should be easy enough, right? We're, we're piping in two known values. I'm just going to do a, a write output here so you can check that the value that's going in is also what's coming out. So that will be piped up on the screen. And we're going to say, okay, we want to get the WMI object class win32 again. And we're going to say this time with a piping object. So we say where object dollar sign underscore dot name equals and then we're going to do the pipe that we had in. So since we're pushing a for object, our for object comes in as the dollar sign underscore. So some of you who are following along might realize that wait, if I'm getting an output of dollar sign from the for loop and I'm getting an output of dollar sign from the get WMI in the pipeline, what's going to happen? Well, the answer is frankly not a lot. So what you're going to get is that there is no dot name. Therefore, there's no equals to dollar sign under. So you see how that starts to be a problem. So what you're going to get is the WMI isn't going to return anything because there's going to be no matching because there's no first variable to match against the second variable. But just to prove a point, we're going to run it. So that's our write output, which tells us what went in. But our WMI object is not going to return anything. So that's the problem. This is an easy fix. So if we change that round, then there's more than one way of doing this, but I'm just going to show you probably the easier one, which is we switch it across to a for each in loop. So we're going to change all our variables to an i for a second, and we say for each i in, and then we say there's our filtered objects, and then we just close that off. Same thing as we had before, just we're changing the i in places. And you see now we have a name, which is our right output, and then we have our identifiers, our vendor, our classes. So this is the WMI object coming back 
So we actually now have output. Now, from that output, we want to go and create an object that we can use, because objects have also actions around them. So let's first get our WMI object into a variable. So now it's going to go into our uninstall. And the uninstall will just simply become an object with multiple parameters. And it will no longer have an output because we're piping it in there. So we have an uninstall variable. And what can we do with our uninstall variable? Well, our uninstall variable has classes, it has functions and things that we can do with it. And in hindsight, I realized that probably should have called it something else because um, we're going to have uninstall dot uninstall here. But the uninstall is a class and we can tell it, hey, do this action. So a bit like changing the case in certain elements of PowerShell or changing to string or to array. This object has a to uh, dot uninstall option. And when it runs, it's going to uninstall the software and we can see it gives a return value of zero. So that return value means successful. There was no error. So what's happened is it's uninstalled our two software programs. Now, there is another way of handling this, but this will work fine for 99.9% .9 of cases because you may get other return codes if you want to filter the return codes. Now we're just going to go and get a list of software once more and we're going to filter our list of software to see if it has in fact been removed. And as you can see, we no longer get an output based on our previous filter. So the software has been successfully uninstalled. Now if you're using invoke expression or invoke command or even PS session, you can now use this on a grand scale to uninstall software from your machines. And that concludes this video.